Welcome to the 2021 Wing Luke Museum Signature Auction Event. We've been doing this event for over 50 years, and this is the first time we've done it as a live virtual auction. So I um, thank you for joining us tonight and helping us to be the People's Museum in a very difficult time. Every time we do the auction, I think about the people who started it over 50 years ago and what made them think of this concept. And I always heard stories about uh, that the early auction budgets were over half for booze. So I thought, is this urban legend or uh, is this true? So we're a museum, so we have archives, so we don't have to go by hearsay. And I went into the archives and I found this flyer for the 1970 floating art auction. And you'll see in there it says, um, you know, come early so that you can get your drinking going. And then I looked in the files some more and I found a folder and it said 1970 auction inventory. And there was one item in there and this is what it was and this is what it said. So I'd like to say tonight, please raise a glass and know that you are part of a historic and very successful tradition. I want to thank the uh, friends and family of Wing Luke who originated the museum. Uh, they did it in tribute to Wing who uh, died in a plane crash, tragically. And his friends and family raised money to search for his plane. And with the $3,500 left over from the search, they decided to start a museum in honor of Wing. And it was a legacy of community, uh, leadership, tragedy and hope, and cultural pride. Wing Luke Museum started as a community initiative. We are not a museum that was formed based on a wealthy person's private collection. And we're also not a government museum. What type of people would start a museum with $3,500 of community donations? People who dared to dream. And if you didn't dare to dream, we would not have what we have today. And look how far we've come. So let's keep daring and dreaming together and see how far we can leap into the future. Have fun tonight, and thank you for your generous support for the museum. Boom, that was, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! I hope that works. Next time you're here at the Wing Luke Museum, ask for the ancient relic. Then you got me. This museum started as an idea that Wing had. And I remember standing outside in the street with him and he was saying, we need to preserve the culture here. And it needs to be in this neighborhood. And so when this plane was lost, it became a very natural idea to follow up on the suggestion that we need a cultural museum right here in the district. Is that you? Which one is you? On the far right? Really? <laughs> That's me. Oh my gosh, you were so cute, Auntie Betty. <laughs> in the old days, we had Japan Town, we had Filipino Town, then we had Chinatown with all the restaurants. It's changed. Now we have younger people making their version of authentic food or what have you. And I love old Chinese food. I don't like the cultural stuff with all the vegetables because I don't eat vegetables. The museum was originally started as a Chinese folk art museum and it evolved, became Pan-Asian American Museum. I think Wing would really cheer that on. He's so into growth. We're so into uh, diversity, involving other cultures. I think he would get a cheerful chuckle <laughs> out, out of the continuation of the work that the museum has done. 
If you've never been to Chinatown, International District of Little Saigon, come visit us because you'll see a lot of culture that you think you know, you don't know. How long have you been coming here? Jeez, 50 years? Maybe longer, because I used to deliver newspapers here back in the uh, middle, early 60s. I have my own menu here. Ask Harry about my menu. Yes, on the menu. Uh, Non-vegetable stuff. My favorite is the barbecue pork uh, chow foam, chicken wings. He's well known for his chicken wings. This okay. is old style Chinese. You can't get any better. 1935. Oh, 86 years now. Okay, cut the camera. Out. We have time for lunch. <laughs> Why is this neighborhood special? It just really, really reflects uh, the struggles, the resilience, survival of the people here, and I just so appreciate that. The Wing Luke is like a second home to me. I come here to, to understand things, and with the help of the staff, I'm learning at my old age. If people knew how great this staff was, I think they might come here more than I do. The hopes for this museum is to continue to further integrate uh, newcomers, new cultural groups, for people to know that the culture that they have has to be preserved, has to be recorded, has to be taught. I hope our next generation remembers our elders. We forget the sacrifices our elders made for us. You know, uh, they came from foreign countries to give us a better life. And I, for one, didn't appreciate that in my younger days. How does it make you feel to see artists like malicious vixens <laughs> dancing at the museum and like embracing, you know, their own cultural expressions? What does that mean to you? It's so new. <laughs> I still need to get acquainted <laughs> with some of the new activities, but I respect that that effort they're making contributes to historic and cultural preservation. And I think Wing would get a kick out of it. I don't think uh, he'd be threatened by the changes and, and the newness. I think that that's part of integrating the next generation. A lot changes not the conditions of a people until they first change that which is in their hearts. Chapter 13, verse 11. It's been a long, a long time coming, but I know a change gonna come. A change gonna come. Refuse to let the colonizer take over my tongue Rap on the top of my lungs Everybody in my hood hustle, clean up dirty Soaking up game like a sponge In my 20s going all out before I hit 30 Used to hear sirens and guns Still on the block, posted with the same homies Hear the other that we run to Middle of night in the stool Know that we heating the temp in the room Oh, know that my time coming soon Flesh turn a dust and get sweat with the broom Oh, don't got nothing to prove A vest for your chest but your faith is what's proof So you flex now, who? Give it what you get out, it's something to lose. Two, one chance can't double back, that's a fact. Seek protection, prayed up so the devil never catch me lack. Everything you do based off intention, I hope that my heart never slacks. OG told me God prepared for the worst, so I was tucked in right. Everybody got something going, can't compare you to no one else. A lot won't change any situation, so you first change yourself. Everybody got something going, can't compare you to no one else. A lot won't change any situation, so you first change your self. Some people's test is being poor, some people test it with wealth. Some people living up their best life, and others got problems with health. A thousand dollars on an iPhone, while millions can't leave the cell. Striving for rivers of honey and milk, I pray that I don't take an L. They try to overprice the consoles, but the game is free. I went from zero to 26 like A to Z. 
Cause life will pass And the nights don't last From the time it start Finish twice as fast Getting worked up off the nonsense I'ma tell you fam don't sweat it Things aren't really what you see So don't be deceived by aesthetics Feed yourself with nothing but the truth Don't worry about how the lies taste Forgive me if I ever led you wrong But believe me when I say Everybody got something going Can't compare you to no one else A lot won't change any situations in your first change yourself everybody got something going can't compare you to no one else a lot won't change any situation so you first change yourself else. Else. My heart in human form sounds cliche, but it is the actual truth. You are my awakening. I experience you as an opportunity to redeem myself for any karma that may return and make itself back around, for any wrongdoing I've done in this life or in past ones. You are human in form, child of my flesh, my bone, but you are a spiritual experience. I sense that you have been here, in this dimension, traveling long before I've known this place this time. I am humbled to have a master teacher. I sit alongside you in gratitude. Life's most endearing lesson with a never ending well of tenderness and an intimacy I didn't feel possible 
until I came to learn you. But I wonder if they just refused to see me, to acknowledge that life had already done to me what no baby would change, that trauma lived in this body, that it had known war before I decided to lay, before I decided to keep you. My blood's memory had known genocide and escape. It had already known refugee camp and carcass and gunfire, execution. My body at 16 had already been an ocean with a body count. Bodies who claimed resistance and had taken back their consent. My body was already home to chain and steel rods, making their way without my consent. It had felt Delta, and Mekong, and Indiana, and Seattle police, and U.S. military. A home made small into Thailand, Laos, and Vietnam, a home pillaged and skinned with a deficiency of sun. Sometimes... It is hard to accept that two things can exist at the same time and be true, that joy and pain are not mutually exclusive, that our experiences have made us but do not predetermine what it is that we are becoming. This body at 16, now at 28, until forever, until I am done deciding what it is I am becoming. For all of your days, while you are growing, and shifting, changing your mind and grounding yourself in your personal convictions. You will know trans people murdered and blood left on street corners, on playgrounds. You will know abusive relationships, both personal and political. Jungle will be familiar to you, the one of concrete and the one that is lush. But you will also know triumph exaltation, forgiveness, jazz, Angkor Wat, catfish, Khmer store, your own language, our love languages, paintings that adorn your rib cage. My kako aloha ova o rean kalau kalani unzuka matsui um aloha everybody <laughs> my name is rean kalau kalani unzuka matsui i am a daughter a younger sister a descendant a proud auntie a cousin a niece i'm also a very proud wife and a Mother to be. I am a Kanaka Maoli, Black, Japanese, and Chinese woman, born and raised in Waianae, Oahu. And I've been living in Des Moines in Seattle since 2009. <laughs> and since 2013, I have been working at the Wing Luke Museum. And it was there that I met o kuipo a kuukane my sweetheart and my love of my life um kitman matsui who at the time i knew as dj kitman and he was there to spin literally his his uh, crate of records for jamfest 
our summer music series. And so I made him a plate of grapes and we ate it in <laughs> Canton Alley. And I was singing along to the records of the Isley Brothers that he was playing. Um, and then, you know, six, seven years later, we're expecting our first Pepe, our heel pull, our first, our first child. The wing has truly changed my life in so many ways. Has really given me purpose and intention and kuleana, responsibility in this life um, who has created a space for me that allows me to be who I am while still discovering who that is, doing what I love and meeting people who are excited to do the same and has just provided so many opportunities for me because people at the wing believed in me and it helped me to believe in myself. I, I met Jules there who connected me with art score um, and where I became a teaching artist in the, the Highland School District. Um, I was able to share my love and passion for Kanaka Maoli Native Hawaiian culture and hula and mo'olelo stories, um, which put me on a path to create Hura Itimana, my Polynesian dance troupe, where we build ohana, we build family, we build community based in shared laughter and shared stories and shared hopes for the future. You know, that's my fiti, that's my ohana, that's my family. The Wing with Museum is also where I've met Uncle Kerry, <laughs> um, who, when I was going through a really hard time in my life, picked me up. You know, we started going to Buddhist temple and we went to Bonadori and he will forever be my uncle and a grand uncle to, to my baby. <laughs> um, it's also where my baby has so many aunties and uncles now <laughs> through um, every facet of my life, but also including the Wingwood Museum. And our, our dream, you know, my dream for our baby and our child and our future is that my baby will grow up in a world that treats him better than it treated me, you know? I want my baby to truly live in freedom. You know? Freedom, freedom from abuse and freedom from <laughs> limiting expectations and freedom from the fear of abuse and the fear of being lesser than and not enough. I want my baby to embrace themselves and I want their identity to be based on who they are and the values that they believe in and how they practice those values and how they carry themselves through life and who they're descendant from and by the lands that has nourished them. I don't want my baby to experience and being told like your your hair is far too wild and big to be Japanese. You know, you're far too dark to be Chinese, but you're not dark enough to be black or your nose isn't big enough to be Hawaiian or you don't know enough of the language or you're not a part of this land. 
And I want you to be comfortable and empowered and emboldened and just fully, fully yourself there. That because of who you are, because of the stories that you've heard, because of the way that I and your father have, have raised you, because of the communities that you've built, you are so true to yourself and your identity and your uniqueness and individuality. And at the same time, so excited and empowered to be a part of a lahui, of a, of a community, of a nation that you can embrace fully being completely different and incredibly similar all at once. That you can embody everything about yourself. No matter what, you are a black, white, Japanese, Chinese, native Hawaiian child of mine. You are a descendant of all of us. And for your future, I, I dream of freedom and love and, and empowerment. I dream of you. Aloha yaoi e ka'u pepe mua. Eki aloha pa'ole. Mahalo. Yeah.
Dear Ba, after Ma died, you told me what the world was like. There's not enough, so hoard when you have something. Money measures your worth. That feelings are shameful. Nen, nung kao. Don't make a sound. Don't cry. Fit in to survive. Don't live in the past and trust no one. That's what you had to do. And I believed you. I was 11. And then your story became mine. These days, I don't want to call you because I'm tired of fighting. Two weeks after I gave birth, you told me, start losing weight by eating less. I had to feed my son. Why did you say these things to me, Ba? What did I do to be treated like I'm less than? Like my thoughts and feelings don't matter? What do I need to do to win your approval so that you will love me the way I need to be loved? Do you know when the tears start to come, I suck them back up and make up any lie to end the call? I don't want you to see me cry. My need for your love spills over into my relationships and no mop is big enough to soak up the mess. You win. I'm done trying to fix you or prove I'm right. It never works because the conflict isn't in the logic. It's stored in our bodies. Your trauma isn't mine to fix and yet I am the recipient of your pain. This is the inheritance of the American child born to immigrant parents. When I was seven years old, you picked me up from Susan's Nails, took me to a Chinese restaurant where we ate a steaming plate of beef chow fun. Just the two of us. I gave you all the long green onions and ate fried bananas and vanilla ice cream for dessert. Or maybe it was when you would come home with a giant bucket of KFC. I wanted the non-spicy drumsticks and you would ask me to rub your shoulders because your body ached from mowing lawns all day. I stood on a step stool and massaged your shoulders, chopping your back like Martin Yan deboning a chicken in 18 seconds. These two memories are the only times I remember feeling loved and safe with you. So now, I use my son as a barricade for each of us to feel safe. Talking about him puts us at ease. And whenever I wipe the poo from his butt, I like to imagine you doing that to me when I was young. Sometimes, me loving me is not calling you. Sometimes, me loving you is unlearning all the ways you made me feel small because it gets in the way of me living big. Your approval has always been impossible. So now it's okay for me to do all the things for my own approval. My wish for us is that one day, I'll treat you to fried bananas with ice cream and you'll show me what's blooming in your garden. That one day I won't remember you as someone who made me resentful, but resilient. 
My wish for our community is that we quit believing there isn't enough. When we fight for crumbs, the white supremacist structure persists. The scarcity mindset might have served a purpose then, but it is making us weak as a collective. When we can shift the enemy from each other to the system that has kept us down, then we are limitless. We are here to dream. We can transform our pain into power. I know that when we can feel, we can heal. This is now my story and the story I will pass on to my son. When we heal, we can dare to dream.